So moving on to cellular respiration now. So I think in my opinion, cellular respiration is a little bit more complex than photosynthesis, but um, I don't know, it can depend. So basically we're doing the reverse now. So instead of using our energy to produce glucose, we're breaking down our glucose to produce our energy. So we have aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic, we need oxygen. We produce a lot of ATP and we need the mitochondria. In our anaerobic respiration, it happens super duper quickly, but we don't produce as much ATP. Basically, it's just um, happening so much faster that we're producing less ATP within the process itself, but because it's so quick, we just can get like a big bang of ATP out. Um, don't need the mitochondria, obviously it doesn't have oxygen. So these are our three steps. I will kind of preface this by saying this, um, Sally respiration can be very complex to kind of understand. I know I've said, I feel like I've said this with every single process, but it does take time. Have a general overview. Diagrams are your best friend. The more you revise it and revise it and revise it one day, like it'll just click. Okay. So this is the first step, the general overview. We're not into the mitochondria yet. Um, we're just breaking down the glucose. Again, I can't emphasize this enough with cellular respiration. This is probably the most important of all the processes in terms of um, bigger picture, breaking it down and understanding what is the process because there's so many kind of intricate details. It really helps if you can understand why, what is our main objective of glycolysis? What is our main objective of Krebs cycle? What is our main objective of ETC? So our main objective of glycolysis, it's in the name glycolysis. We're basically splitting glucose. We're doing that initial breakdown um, into a bit of a more simpler molecule. So this is in the cytosol. It happens in anaerobic and aerobic respiration because it doesn't require oxygen, doesn't require our mitochondria. So we've got our glucose molecule. That's You'll often see it kind of referred to as how many carbons are in the molecules. Um, but basically glucose has six carbons, right? C6H12O6. So we get our one six carbon molecule and we break it into two. So now I've got three carbons, three carbons. These three carbon molecules are called pyruvates. Hopefully that makes sense. Simple enough. We're just literally splitting that glucose because remember the whole objective is we're breaking it down to get energy. So this is just the first step of breaking it down. Um, we do get a little bit of, sorry, let's just say a... TP, not ADP. We get two molecules of ATP um, and then we have NADH as well. Remember, not NADPH, NADH. So I've got our um, ATP and our NADH. That's it for glycolysis. Relatively simple, at least compared to the other two. So now going into the Krebs cycle, um, you have this kind of intermediate reaction or this early thing, and that's just converting pyruvate into acetyl-CoA. So this technically isn't the cycle yet, um, but we have pyruvate, we, again, which is our three carbon molecule, and we convert it into acetyl-CoA, which is our two carbon molecule. So we have pyruvate that goes to acetyl-CoA. The other carbon is CO2. So remember CO2, we produce CO2. It's a product of cellular respiration. So one molecule kind of comes from that conversion. We also have a bit of NADH as well. Step two, this is where kind of our the actual, I guess, money of the reaction is. So we are now in the mitochondrial matrix. So this is all happening in the mitochondria. Krebs cycle um, and ETC, it's in the mitochondria. So the mitochondrial matrix, it's basically the fluid. It's kind of the mitochondria equivalent of the stroma. So we have the Krebs cycle going on and the acetyl-CoA basically goes in and we get all of our coenzymes. So we get um, CO2, that's a bit of another thing. Um, but importantly, we get some ATP and we get our NADH and our FADH2. These are really important because we're going to use them in the ETC. Remember, this is what I'm talking about with purpose. So purpose of glycolysis to split glucose into our pyruvate, so our early breaking down. The purpose of Krebs cycle is basically to load these coenzymes so we can use it in ETC. ETC is our nice like main objective of cellular respiration. And it's where we're going to get our huge burst of energy and our huge production of ATP. So the Krebs cycle is basically just um, cooking the, um, yeah, getting the ingredients ready to put them into the ETC. So we need our NADH 
and we need our FADH2 and we've also got a bit of ATP and CO2. Um, you might think like in total the Krebs cycle produces two molecules of ATP so we get double this because remember we had two pyruvate molecules to start off with so then we're going to get two acetyl-CoA molecules um, so we get double all of this. Honestly the numbers aren't really important. I don't think I've really ever seen a question like how many FADH2 molecules are appearing. Um, so I would say just remember it if you can, but it's not the biggest thing to be aware of. The actual names themselves, so knowing FADH2, knowing NADH, knowing your CO2, etc. That's the really important stuff. Okay, now we get um, into the main gist of it. So this is the Cristae, sorry, spelt like this, Cristae. So this is our inner membrane of our mitochondria. So remember we were in the matrix, which is the fluid that's in that like kind of bound within the cristae now i'm moving to the actual membrane itself um so essentially it can be very confusing you do just have to break it down again kind of try to think of the purpose watch as many videos as you need to look at as many diagrams as you have to and importantly understand when you're going beyond the level of what you need um so essentially we have our electrons so remember that we have NADH, we've got our FADH2, they're carrying our little hydrogens, right? So our hydrogens, basically, they will give out electrons, hence electron transport chain, and these will be transported along the membrane. So we have our electrons, they move through, you can see just moving along, moving along. Um, and then our hydrogen kind of moves along, as you saw there. I think that's it. Yeah, okay, so... I'll talk about yeah, the electrons first. Essentially, they just move through um, and they're literally just transported and, and they're carried through. The hydrogens, as you can see, are pumped like over the other side of that membrane. So the intermembrane space, that's where they're kept. And again, I don't want to get too technical with this, but um, they get like shoved into the intermembrane space. And this creates this kind of force, what's called like a proton motive force that basically gets this, our ATP synthase running. ATP synthase, the enzyme that makes our ATP. Um, so we have our electrons that are being carried along, our protons, so our hydrogen ions, they're being shoved into this space and they're basically pushing this ATP synthase down. Um, so you can see that here. So a um, uh, kind of analogy that helped me think about this was I got told this in uni actually. Um, it was like the hydrogens, if you can think of like pushing these hydrogens, it's like pushing water up a hill and then having it like come down, like almost like a, like a dam or like getting, you know, those wheels that like spin with the water, like a hydro, like I'm thinking of, I don't know, hydroelectric plant, whatever it is, this idea of like pushing that water up and then it's coming down and then it's producing that energy if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, that analogy kind of helped me a little bit. I will say like VCAR doesn't really need that technical of an explanation. I think it just does help to kind of wrap your head around it because even before I sort of heard that analogy and I would always kind of see this stuff in textbooks, but it was never really explained. Um, in my head, I used to just be like, oh, I don't really know what goes on in the electron transport chain, but I know somehow like ATP synthase is turned on. So basically I'm just trying to explain how that works. But again, you wouldn't really be expected too much to write about like, you know, hyd like hydrogen ions or proton motor force or stuff like that. Generally, you just need to know that the electrons will be carried along this chain. ATP synthase will um, basically produce your ATP. And importantly, your hydrogens, they will basically mesh with your oxygen and that will create water. And then there's our output. Hopefully that makes sense. Again, I know that is really tricky, but try to think about that a couple of times. Try to let it sink in your head. Um, but yeah, so basically we've got our NADH and our FADH2, so our coenzymes. Their purpose is literally just to carry our electrons and our protons. So they give their electrons, passes along here, the hydrons get hydrogen, sorry, or the protons get shoved into the intermembrane space. This causes a force that basically pushes our 
ATP synthase to get working. And this is where all our ATP comes from. This is the main purpose of this whole process. Um, and then our protons are left over and they're like, uh, where can we go? They combine back with their little electron and the oxygen that we're breathing in is waiting there to collect those hydrogens and to form water. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. This is a really nice, um, diagram that kind of captures that. So as you can see, it's 30 or 32 ATP because in the electron transport chain, you're producing 26 or 28. And so plus the initial four, that's what you're getting. Um, so again, understand this was kind of specified by VCAR with last year's study design. So the new one in old resources, you'll see that it is 36 or 38. So just be mindful of that. Okay. Slido poll. Um, oh, okay. Wait, I think this is the last one. No. Okay. Sorry. Wait, maybe I'm missing a slido poll. Am I not looking properly? Oh, okay. Sorry. It's been swapped around. How many ATP molecules are produced in the ETC? Okay. So something I've literally just mentioned. So try to think about it. So think about the question, how many ATP molecules are produced in the electron transport chain? Okay, I know we do want to get into answering some questions soon, so I'll stop the voting there. Um, yeah, 26 or 20, oh, did I stop it? Yeah, 26 or 28. So that is in the ETC, plus our two from the Krebs cycle, plus our two from glycolysis. That means the overall of aerobic respiration is 30 or 32, but in the ETC itself, 26 or 28. Um, so yeah, just be mindful of that. Okay, so um, again, it's the exact same thing. So you're looking at temperature, it's the same. Glucose availability, it is um, a substrate. Glucose is a substrate, so you're getting that plateau. Oxygen concentration, it's an input, you're getting that plateau. The only thing to be aware of is with oxygen concentration, um, like we're thinking about switching from aerobic to anaerobic as well. Okay. So anaerobic respiration, um, we're looking at, again, basically like a really simple pathway. This is when oxygen is low when we're in a low oxygen environment that we're still able to get um, ATP produced essentially. So glycolysis, exactly the same, we're breaking into our pyruvate, we've got our two ATP. This is literally it. That's where the ATP comes from. This process just happens so quickly that it just goes two ATP, two, 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 two rather than having to wait a bit of a long time to get 30 or 32 um, from the longer process, it just happens very quickly um, so that we can just get it real quick, really. So from there, the pyruvate is either converted into lactate or lactic acid in animals, um, and in yeast, it's converted into ethanol and carbon dioxide. That's the main thing to know. Um, like the NAD stuff like that, I don't think I even really knew that. The number, I don't think I even knew that as well. Um, just understand it's either lactic acid slash lactate in animals or your ethanol in your CO2. Um, and yeah, cellular respiration, photosynthesis, are the most commonly tested for that like scientific poster for your area of study three, SAC. Um, so know these processes really well.